Praise God, whom all blessings flow. I'm Reverend Ed Receiving. Come wish with us today. Listening to your word.
Amen. For allowing us to be here on this Sunday morning. Because we know that it's by His grace and His mercy. And we give Him thanks and praise. Amen. 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 Our scripture this morning is coming from the book of James. The book of James. Fourth chapter. Beginning with the first verse. James. Fourth chapter. Beginning with the first verse. And when you have it, say Amen. James, fourth Amen. chapter, Amen. beginning with the first verse. Amen. Amen. What is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is not the source your pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasure. You adulterers, you do not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God. Therefore, whoever wants to make the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture speaks to no purpose? He justly desired the spirit which he has made to dwell in us. But he who gives a greater grace, therefore say, God is opposed to the proud, but God gives to the humble. Amen. Submit yourself, submit therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your joy into gloom. And the 10th verse says, Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt. Some translation may say he will lift you up. Yes, Amen. Amen. God's word for God's people. Amen. 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 It is prayer time. As we prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. Let us be ever mindful of standing in the need of prayer. I ask that the church would keep the family of the Lord's river. Amen. Pastor, last night, one thing for sure, he's not suffering anymore. He's at peace with the Lord. And as we prepare our hearts and minds for prayer, I ask that you pray for the world. Healing.
Willie Jones, Jesse Congress, Alvin Lomax, Eddie Evans, Sister Priscilla James, children in the school system, state of Alabama and all over the world, pray for the Jefferson community, pray for the church of the world. Pray for the Jefferson District, residing in Hawaii and family. Alabama Ford Episcopal District, District, Bishop and Mrs. Forte, Boston Kite, Kenny Carter, Marshall Clay. There'll be others you may call the name of this time. Thank you. 
pray for our children. We keep them covered under the blood. And Lord, have the children. Some are going back to school. Some are still doing work. We pray and lead the blood of Jesus over them. That you'll keep them covered under your blood. Oh, gracious Father, when we look at the world and see all that is happening, Lord, we realize that you're warning us to let us know that time is winding up. And that you're coming back again. And you're coming back for a church without part already. But every Father, we pray for healing in our land.
same night. Yeah. And the scripture that was there earlier comes from James, the fourth chapter, verses, verses 1 to 10. Look at the 10th verse, which says, Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. Some translations say he will lift you up. Amen. Amen. Pray with me just for a moment from this subject. God will lift you up. Amen. Amen. In our Christian walk, we go through different seasons in our lives. There are seasons where we are experiencing good times, blessings, one after another. During these times, we sing the song from Zion with joy. Then there are seasons where we feel like we're going through a drought of a family. This is when the test and the trials come. We realize and know that, you know, things don't be happy and joyous always. But it always happens in joy in the Lord. You know? Because in life, we go through some difficult times in our life. The enemy tries to steal our joy and our soul. Where do we get the strength to handle all the pressures of life? How do we navigate through life's rocky path in a flesh and tabernacle? Because the flesh There are times when we get discouraged. Sometimes we think people are our best discouraged and best encouraged because we can see them and touch them. And all of us meet and sometimes just an encouraging word to make you feel better. And you don't know how it feels to give somebody some encouraging words when they're going through some difficult times. Let them know that God's going to see them through. And things are going to get better. And even in this pandemic, there's a lot of people who have gotten discouraged because of all the things that's going on. But I encourage you to let you know that God's And he will see you through. But the most sure and lasting encouragement comes from God. Because he sees the future and knows how we fit into it. He knows our needs. And unlike people, he can love us perfectly. Exactly as we need to be loved. God knows just what we need. Amen. We should seek encouragement through prayer. Because God promised to heal and comfort us. And lift us up. Most of us at some point in time have been mistreated. And you know, and then you became disturbed and said that you would not allow that to happen to you again. You know, there are times when people have hurt you and mistreated you. And an individual or person that did it to you, you said uh, they did it this time, but they won't do it again. But I have you to know that we've got to go through some times like this. Amen. You know, you're saying that, well, they hurt me this time, but they hurt me again. Uh -huh. You know, they mistreated me this time. I'm not going to let it happen again. Uh -huh. Well, what about when we mistreat God? All right. What if he will never happen again? What if God said that he would never do what we need to buy for our needs again? You know, sometimes people say, now nah, they hurt me, but they're going to come to the, they don't need something. I ain't got nothing for them. I'm not going to help them. What if God treated us this way? We talk about how people mistreat us, but we mistreat God too. But we don't serve like we should. We don't praise him like we should. We don't love one another as we should. We don't do the thing that he required of us. When someone heard it, you think that it was wrong. You know that it was wrong and, and you admit that fault. But recognize the fault and actually change your ways in two different things. It's not enough for to recognize. 
the temporal rather than eternal. Other words, people are finding joy in the things of the world rather than Christ. They are worshiping the things that created rather than worshiping the Creator. Some people are worshiping their car, some are worshiping their money, some are worshiping their house, some are worshiping their job, rather than worshiping that Creator, the thing that is eternal. Because these things will soon pass away. This church builder one day will get old and have to be replaced. But when you have a relationship with Christ, it is eternal. We're not even, we're not really looking to his love and of us for our true sense of security and significance in life. Instead, we are daily pursuing the approval of the love of us. Right. How others feel, how what others think about me. Amen. But we should be concerned about how God feels about us. Right. What does God think about you? We go out of our way to please man. Don't even attempt to give God some praise and thanks for what he has done for you. We are more concerned about attaining of a position of prestige of power of the accumulation of certain possessions that I mean of finding happiness in life. We are going to great lengths to defend our reputation to gain the admiration and acceptance and respect of others. The main reason why God opposes our proud self-sufficient is because he knows that it always leads to glorification of man and his ability rather than of Christ and his transforming work on the cross. And so God opposed the pride by withholding his grace and power from such people. I don't know about you, but I don't want God to withhold his grace from me. I don't want God to withhold his power from me. I don't want God to withhold his Holy Spirit from me. Because I know that it's by his grace and his mercy that I'm alive and well. I know that it's by his grace and his mercy that my children and family are all doing well. I know that it's by his grace and mercy that we have been blessed down through this pandemic. The Bible is full of the record of those who in their pride try to exalt themselves to their own needs apart from God. Even the Apostle Paul tried to climb a ladder of religion, married by good, good work, only to be brought down by pride. In one sense, in all the same story, all who want to exalt themselves through pride, even a religious or non religious way will be brought down by Christ. Because there's only one who's worthy of the highest praise. That is Christ. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm going to give him some praise. Yeah. Because he's worthy of all our praise. He made it to make praise your fellow man and give them accolade for what they've done. But the highest praise go to God. Because we realize and know that heaven is the Lord on our side. We wouldn't be what we are today. We couldn't achieve what we have achieved. We couldn't have accomplished what we have accomplished if it had not been for God on our side. In other words, he deserved the highest praise. I don't know about you, but I'm going to praise him. I'm going to give him some praise. I'm going to give him some faith. And we can't get our own deepest need by our own ability. How then do we appropriate the grace and power of God in our life? What is the proper response to the problem of pride? Our second point is humility. James right God for the pride, but give grace to the humble. Submit yourself then to God. Notice that the word humble is the last word in verse 6 and the first word in verse 10. James calls you to come near to God and he will come near to you. The idea that when you up against the wall, find yourself in a desperate need of courage, strength and power, and it on your own. Instead, humble yourself and draw near to God for help. In other words, when you find yourself against a rock and a hard place, yeah. you can't get out on your own, right. but you have to call on God, call on the name of Jesus. Yeah. He 
will come to your rescue. He will give you strength. He will give you strength when you're weak. He will give you power to overcome. James goes on to say to humble yourself before God must include dealing with your sin. In verse 8, James said, wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart. Coming to God in his will to mean learning to come to him through the cross of Jesus Christ.
It brought to do for you for what you cannot do for yourself. And the end result of the change that takes place in your life will not be to your credit, but to give God. A lot of times you want to take the credit from God. Look at what I've done. Look at what I've accomplished. Look at what I've achieved. But had it not been for God blessing you, you couldn't have achieved anything. It's safe. And the Bible says. 
I'm in real good feel. Oh, Even if I have to reweigh that oh, and pick you up. Yeah, Lord. He will lift you up. Yes, he will. He will yes. provide for you every day. Yeah. I said he will yeah. take care of you. Yeah. I said he is yeah. keeping you. Yeah. He is yeah. providing for you. Yeah. He's a way maker. Yeah. He'll make a way out of the way. That might be someone today. Kind of give a quiet for life. Let us come. While the blood is still running over you. Feel like nobody cares. But Jesus cares. Yes, he does. Jesus cares. He's so my holy in me. That might be one. Thank you for coming and come and join us again at Small Memorials. Be blessed.